Delft, from microscopy to nanoscopy. At TU Delft, scientists are always busy thinking of ways to improve the level of detail they can make visible in a microscope. To understand what is going on in their heads, let us go back to Delft in 1674 when it all started. The Dutch draper and tradesman, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, punctures his finger. Using the world's first microscope that he built himself, he investigates his blood and discovers red blood cells. Later, he also discovers the spermatozoan, but that's a story for another time. We move to 1690 and meet Christian Huygens. When he threw some loose bricks into a canal, he observed the interference of waves. The same interference happens with light. Plane waves focused at different angles by a lens onto a screen create an interference intensity distribution. As more and more plane waves interfere at different angles, they eventually produce a blurred spot. The width of the spot is determined by the wavelength of light. <coughs> Onwards to 1905. In that year, as well as publishing his theory of relativity, Einstein showed that light is made of particles. He used the photoelectric effect. If light hits a metallic surface, electrons are emitted only for certain colors of light, and that can only be possible if light consists out of particles, called photons. The energy is given by Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, or equivalently, by h times the speed of light c divided by the wavelength lambda. For these and other contributions to quantum mechanics, Einstein received the Nobel Prize in 1921. In 1927, Heisenberg discovered the uncertainty principle and was able to apply it to microscopic imaging. I wonder how certain can I know the position of a single molecule imaged through a microscope. The image should look like a blurred spot because of the wave nature of light. Now let's bring Huygens' wave picture and Einstein's particle picture together. Photons are emitted from the molecule and imaged by the lens onto the detector in the imaging plane. The photons arrive one by one and form a small blob, its width proportional to the wavelength of light. The maximum angle of waves captured by the lens and focused onto the detector is alpha. From Einstein I know that the momentum of a photon is Planck's constant h divided by the wavelength of the photon if a molecule now emits a photon, its momentum parallel to the detector changes in an unknown direction by plus or minus of h divided by lambda, multiplied by the sine of alpha. And if the molecule emits n photons, the spread in the change of momentum is the square root of n times this expression. If we now substitute this into my uncertainty relation, delta x times delta p is h, we arrive at an expression for the uncertainty for the position estimate of the molecule that is given by the wavelengths and the number of photons. Because I combine the wave and particle character of light, I know exactly how precisely I can localize a single molecule. Let us leave Heisenberg, partying away in 1927, and move to 2006, when Eric Betzig and Harold Hess take the next step. In Harold Hess's living room is a strange setup. Using a photochemical effect, the two men let single molecules blink, and this is a breakthrough. If you image many molecules at once, you cannot measure all of their positions because of the significant overlap of their spots. Compare this with stargazing. Two stars very close to each other appear as a single blurred spot. But if you image one by one, you will see the stars separately, first one, then the other, without the overlap. And this is exactly what happened in Harold Hess's living room. The molecules blinked. This made it possible to image only a small subset of molecules at each moment in time, so they could find their positions with the high precision given by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. By repeating this process, all molecules in the sample could be imaged, leading to precise knowledge of their positions. In this way, Hess and Betzig obtained a much crisper image than people had previously believed possible. For this, the Nobel Prize was awarded to, amongst others, Eric Betzig. He and Harold are still best friends. Let's return to Delft. The most powerful graphics cards, initially used for gaming, are now used in Delft for super-fast computations on super-resolution microscopy images. For example, in biomedical applications.
Using super-resolution microscopy to visualize structure at sub-diffraction length scales, we reveal the nuclear pore complex. These complexes are the gateways between the cell nuclei of our cells and the cytoplasm, and as such responsible for the transport of RNA, which in turn sets in motion all protein production in the cell. We image many hundreds of these complexes at once and then combine them into one single image of a complex. By computationally combining information from many complexes into one, we can reconstruct it with even higher detail. We see the eightfold symmetry of the complex and can estimate its diameter to 164 plus or minus 0.5 of a nanometer. Sub-nanometer precision measurements with a light microscope. Microscopy in Delft. The story continues.